Hello, my name is Lena, and if you haven't been here before, uh, I am turning 29 this year. Nobody freak out, it's fine. As I approach the big 3 0, it's important that nobody panics. 30, flirty, thriving. Uh, but it has made me think about some of the stuff I wish I had known in my 20s. I feel like I've really spent my 20s well. I feel like I've had a really fun time, but there were certain things that I was like, oh. These tips would have saved me time, shame, or just general frustration. I think your 20s should be about collecting data uh, for yourself. Data about what you like, uh, what you dislike, what you're good at, what you're not actually that good at, who your best place to help, and who best feeds you. Some tips are big, some tips are teeny, but if you're anything like me, it's the teeny frustrations that sometimes break you down more than the huge existential breakdowns. Without further ado, well, it's a lie. With one more further ado, we're gonna jump into things. Um, if you enjoy this channel and if you would like more content from me and more things like this, please consider joining the Gumption Club. It's a Patreon only group where you get free poetry, you get access to 200 videos that are secret on this channel only for Gumption Club members, uh, live streams, free books, lots more. So do check that out if you'd like to become a Gumption Club member. Gumption Club member of the day today is Lizzie Vice. Thank you so much Lizzie for supporting the channel. Aces of Spaces, uh, I'm gonna be sending you a free book in post just for being a member. No more ados, on with the truths, on with the tips. Let's roll it. How do I say this? People aren't thinking about you. Like you, at least 80% of your thoughts are taken up with thoughts about you. Sometimes I think some of our most insecure, most self-hating thoughts come from a quite narcissistic secret place inside of us. I know mine do. And that is the assumption that other people really care what I do with my life. <laughs> people who love you are invested in what you do, but they're also invested in your level of happiness. And they, if they know themselves as much as they should, they'll know that you're the best person to judge what is best for your life. And I've also found myself dodging really big happy ideas I want to put into my life because I'm worried of the 10, 20 seconds that somebody else will disapprove of it when I tell them at a dinner, over the kettle at lunch, uh, when I see them in the street. And the reality of those moments you have to remember is that you didn't ruin their day by making a choice for yourself. They will think about it, they might turn their noses up at it, they might be a bit miffed, but then they carry on with their life and they think about their problems and their children and their boyfriend. They're not thinking about you. And when I realized that, it was so incredible. I was like, oh. I've been making decisions so that other people feel comfortable in the 20 seconds, five minutes, three hours that they might interact with me a day or a week. But I have to live with those decisions. I have to be in the, that life that they're commenting on. So my opinion just mathematically is more important than theirs. Great example of this, uh, I've got PCOS, so I get very, very hairy arms. Like if I let my arm hair grow, it does kind of look like a sleeve. Now, for a week, I thought, gonna do an experiment. I shaved one of my arms, completely baby smooth. The other one, full moon, Professor Lupin from here to here. Nobody commented. I went through my whole week. I had so many meetings and saw friends, did things casually and professionally, and nobody even glanced at my arm. Nobody even did a like, oh, I'm not gonna comment, look. <laughs> because people don't actually pay that much attention to what you wear, say, or do. And while, you know, the things that I think are important will impact people, and I think that the way you live your life and you treat people impacts them massively, how you live your, your life or the little things about you, uh, people aren't noticing. And that is so liberating. People aren't thinking about you. <laughs> Woo! Are you struggling with something? Did you check if there was a book on it yet? Did you? You can only Google what you think you want to hear. Libraries and bookshops have truly saved my 20s from ruin. Go into your local bookshop or your library, go to the self-help section. Has somebody really sat down and thought about this, an expert, have they written a book on it? Can you check it out or buy it? Do that. If the self-help section doesn't yield, try the psychology section. If the psychology section doesn't yield, go to the economics section. If those sections don't yield, go to the fiction section. Pick up a book about somebody who isn't you and live in their head for a little bit. Trust me, you'll come out thinking with so much more clarity than when you went in. And you might find some unexpected answers to your problems. Books. Jealousy is useful. If you feel jealous, <laughs> hallelujah, praise the Lord. Um, your 20s are an exercise in data collection. If you're jealous of someone, it's a good indication that you want to be where they are in life. Excellent, now we know 
or you want the thing that get them the acceptance and the recognition that you want. Then you can go in and inspect whether you want that acceptance and why, or why you want that recognition and why. But mainly I think it indicates your mind telling you its actual desires. An absence of jealousy is also useful. If you look at the person who is three steps ahead of you in the direction that you're heading and you're not jealous of them in some way or you're not like oh one day it'll be me then maybe you're going in the wrong direction there's nothing wrong with being jealous it's what you learn from it and how you act because of it that matters so inspect what you're jealous of it is okay to go on a holiday on your own See the point about how nobody is watching you <laughs> nobody is thinking about you and if you go on a holiday on your own nobody bloody notices. Sometimes you need a break from everyone and the pleasure of being able to do exactly what you want when you want is the kind of indulgent holiday that sometimes heals. I've been on holiday lots of times before in my life. I'll link some videos that I've done on that before, but I would recommend it if you are trying to work out who you are and also what kind of holiday really relaxes you. I would experiment, go on some on your own. It's okay that you spent the rest of the year compromising. Don't, <laughs> not on holiday. Picking a partner, oh, you can be such a ball ache, quite literally sometimes. And I know that I've misunderstood my own wants and needs many times in this category, but from where I am lying now, what I can say is the things that make a partnership work aren't the things I thought they were. They're not liking the same bands as you, liking the same books as you, liking the same friends as you, liking the same levels of socialising that you do, liking the same parties as you, having grown up in the same postcode as you. None of these things make relationships work. They might be cool, but they're not the things you should be questioning, yes or no. The three things I think make or break relationships are work ethic, curiosity level, and sense of humour. Now, um, curiosity level is an intelligence level. It's how curious you are about the world, what you actually want to explore about it, what, you know, whether you think things are fascinating to learn for the sake of it or not. Work ethic. You can work hard on completely different things in completely different ways, but if you don't have, but if you don't both have things on a domestic and career level that you have similar feelings about work, e work ethic wise, at least in some parts of your life, I think that's a make or break. And then humour. Like, if you can't, the only way you're gonna get through life is by laughing at it because it's absolutely hilarious. And you, if you both can't laugh together about stuff, you might as well roll over and die. During your 20s, you may or may not decide to go to university. Either way, good decision for you. However, if you do go to university, this is a Kindle. If you're a long time watcher of this channel, you know I have my reservations about Amazon as a company, but at the moment I haven't found a better performing or more ethical um, e-reader and it has some incredible functions. So I empower you to invest in one if you're at university. One, if you're studying subjects like English, history, psychology, it's very likely that a lot of the texts that you study, especially in first and second year, are going to be either available from your library in ebook, saving you the mad sweaty dash of trying to check out the books from the library while everybody else who's on your class is trying to check them out at the same time. Also, a lot of them will be in the public domain, which means they are freely available for every citizen ever. So you can download those and own those for life. It also means that when you're reading a book, you can control F the words in the book, which is a lifesaver for essays, however much of a stringent and intelligent and a noteworthy student you are. If you're writing a essay about a certain character or a certain theme, uh, being able to search for that character or theme name, uh, or you remember a passage and you can't remember what page it's on, but you remember the sentence in the passage, um, being able to find that saves you so much time. This is coming from a person who didn't have a Kindle for the first year and a half of uni. And then also what people don't know is that if you have a PDF or a Word document, uh, you can get a Kindle email address. Every Kindle that exists has an email address attached to it. You just need to go into your account and find out what it is. You can email yourself books or your essays. I used to reread my essays on the Kindle to check for spelling mistakes or, or points because it was easier than looking at it on a screen. It also reduces your screen time. Um, and if you've ever been at university, you know that screen time is like actually unhealthy and ridiculous. So I used to email myself journals and stuff on here in PDF or Word. Uh, but also if you'd like it to be searchable and highlightable and, and flow properly as a document, for your personal email, you can email your Kindle email, attach a file in Word or PDF and then write the word convert in the subject line, email it to your Kindle and it will convert into an ebook and it will flow like an ebook. 
<laughs> You're welcome. Every time in your 20s you think, oh, I'm just not that sort of person, or you think I'm just not the kind of person that would do a thing like that. Um, stop and question it. You might be correct, but make sure that you're thinking about that before you act on it. When I was on my gap yard, um, I did some manual labor in the desert, long story. I ended up in a trail crew with all these uh, people that were older and cooler than me and definitely stronger than me. <laughs> and um, they all had these amazing tattoos with stories and I'd stay up uh, at night around the bonfire and ask them about the stories behind their tattoos and they'd tell me and I'd be like, oh my God. Um, and then one day they were like, why don't you have tattoos? And I was like, why, what, why? And they were like, well, you really seem like you like tattoos. I don't know, I'm not being funny, but over the last like couple of months, you've literally just asked us about our tattoos uh, and you seem to really like them. And I was like, yeah, but I'm not really, yeah, that's just not for me. I'm not really that kind of person. It's not like, I'm just not the kind of person that would get tattoos, but I am really interested in them. And they were like, okay. <laughs> and I went back to my tent and I was like, who trained me to say I'm not that kind of person? Who says what kind of person I am? I actually do really like tattoos. Why do I have this imprinted idea of who I am that so far contradicts what I like and am interested in? Because what is a self? If it's not, your interests and passions. So on that trip, now it's not, I'm not, I'm not saying this is the, the great elevated story to prove that this is a great concept, but I did end up getting my first tattoo on that trip. Um, it's a little bit, look, it was before the whole birdcage craze came in, I swear to God, but anyway, it was cool at the time, it's not the best. <laughs> Don't make me unpack the feminist implications of a tramp stamp, but it's there to remind me that I make decisions in the person and the moment that I'm in, not because of who I think I am. No more nakedness in this video, that's it. This is a kitchen. You can spend time here if you want. There will be a lot of things you try to cook at uni and mainly it's up to personal taste or like idiot proof instructions. A lot of things are a lot easier than people make out. The one thing that is contentious for me is how to cook rice. People have a million different ways of doing it. All of them seem to come out either soggy or burnt. And it was only when I returned home after my first term at university and I was like, mum, I can't cook rice. What is wrong with me? She was like, oh, don't you know the way that I cook it? Turns out my mum cooks it what she calls the Brazilian way. My parents used to live in Brazil. Whether it's Brazilian or something else, I don't know. But trust me, the way to cook rice. For every one part rice, you want two parts water. I do this with one mug of rice, two mugs of water. You can do whatever you want. You get a little sprinkling of salt. You put it in with the dry rice. You put a little dollop of oil in with the dry rice. No water yet. Mm-hmm. You put the heat on low. You heat the rice in the oil until the rice looks clear, but not burnt, just clear. And then two mugs of boiling water straight into the pan. It will go first of all, but you don't do anything. Then you stir it once, you put a lid on if you can, and you fucking leave it. Do not touch that rice until all of the water has evaporated. One stir and then never touch it again. This is a point of stress for me. I don't know why I feel so passionately about it, but seriously, why is it so hard to cook rice? Now I know. Now you know too. I'm glad that we both know. If you made a vision board, you had a goal or a promise to yourself or a bucket list or a person that you wanted to spend your life with or a big thing your younger self wanted to do or achieve, do not be beholden to a fictional character. Your old self is one, the person, it's not really truly the person you were, it's the person you remember you were. And also that person no longer exists. And that person wanted the best for you in the future and they wished those things because they wanted the best for future you, not because they hated you. Um, so if you don't want to follow through on the old things you promised yourself because you've learnt more and you know more about yourself and what you need and what you want and what's best for the world, do that. Fuck your younger self. Break that promise. Do that thing. Don't do that other thing. Um, never be beholden to your past self. They wanted the best for you. So with the knowledge you have, do that. You are not above speaking to people you disagree with. It's okay if you are too hurt, too tired, or sick of talking to people you disagree with. That's fine. Telling me you're above talking to people you disagree with that's the lesson I had to learn. The one that is like, actually, you are not better than that task. And you also must know that that is the only way things are gonna change. So whether you wanna take on that task or not is totally fine. Either way, you know yourself and what you're capable of and what you feel ready to do, but never feel like you are above it or that the world doesn't need it. Um, 
or that you're more important than the people you disagree with because you're not i learned that the awful ways okay controversial one do things for free learn and know when to ask for payment but do not lead your life and give your skills based on monetary value always set aside a certain amount of time a certain amount of resources a portion of your life for that i don't know what a perfect world would look like but we're not in it right now realistically there are things that need doing in the world that no one is going to pay you for the world will only change if you do them anyway you know how this applies to your life you get to decide what are basic resources and what are excessive resources but if you if you have extra time in your life and it won't damage your core priorities or your core mental health Think about giving it away. Um, I'm not being funny, 100% not spot on, but have you ever tried Trello? It's literally changed my life. It's like a desktop post-it note thing that you can get on your phone as well, and I actually have organised all of my work life, all of my home life, my taxes, uh, all of my video prep, my novel. I did it all on Trello. Literally organisation, if somebody organised a digital post-it note system taking into account the way my brain works also dip bonus points google keep oh my god if you've got a if you have a gmail account you have a google keep account you can just go to heap.google.com i sound like an advert i'm not this is literally me being evangelical about a product and that's where i keep all my notes and all of my poems and everything is like on google keep and it's attached to my email address and it's amazing so they're my product plugs for things that have actually genuinely saved my life be the housemate that you wish to live with. I've been a great housemate. I've been a fucking awful housemate. If you don't think your housemates will notice that you're doing your fair share of the work, they do. The small things matter in these tenuous relationships. Remember that your housemates aren't your family, they don't have conditional love for you, and they don't have to live with you. So remember to change the toilet paper when you use one up, buy your fair share of it. Don't use stainless steel cutlery in people's non-stick pans. Take out the bins without boasting about it, and never leave hair in the shower. That's my bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> this next one is one I worked out very recently and I wish I had worked out sooner. If you don't want to justify your decisions to lots of people, a decision that you know is right for you, just do it and don't tell them about it until after you have done it. People are way less likely to criticize you or give you unasked for feedback if you've already made the life decision. We're counting big things like marriage, and babies in this, but it also works for small scale decisions like getting a haircut, leaving your job. If you say, oh, I feel like cutting my hair short, people are like, oh no, you'd look ugly with short hair, or like, oh no, I love your long hair. You don't wanna hear it. Just tell them afterwards. They're not gonna be like, oh, gutted. For some reason, people can see the context of their rudeness in retrospect, rather than passing comment on things that you love and you are about to do. Do you see what I mean? Ask the people whose opinions you trust, and fuck the rest of them. Just fuck them, just fuck them. Tell them after. Send them an invite to the party once you've succeeded. I like big books and I cannot lie. You were the brother can do now. Um, the next bit of advice is <laughs> no one learn anything by you telling them off. If you think that somebody is saying something that you don't agree with, don't tell them off, even if they deserve it. Because if the outcome you want is for them to stop saying it, you're not gonna get that outcome. If you want to feel more superior to them than you already do and get the power in your eyes in the argument, then yeah, tell them off. But if you want things to change, learn to have conversations with people you disagree with. Ask them why they think that, respect them. This is an opportunity for you to form your argument in a better and more concise way. So do that, don't tell people off. Not never, not ever. I look like a thumb. <laughs> Suffer fools because you are one. And um, one strike and you're out is gonna get you in a mess. I'd say three, four, five strikes. Nobody is perfect, but set yourself a fool limit. Whether that's the amount of people that you love, but every now and then they're like, oh, you will also be that person for somebody at some point but know your limits, preserve your energy, and be accountable to yourself. You know, you know. Tights. Now, I've spent the majority of my 20s going like this with my tights. Tights never fit. Except that tights aren't designed for bodies. That's fine, we still want to wear them. Here's how we do it. Pair of pants, pair of tights, pair of pants. Them's the rules of the universe. I don't make them, that's just the only way that tights will stay up. And now I know and I adhere to the rules and life is calmer somehow, although with more laundry. Thank you so much for watching my unsolicited, unasked for 
advice. Um, let me know if there's any that you take, any you disagree with, you can tell me in the comments. If there's any points that I made during the video that you'd like me to unpack in one video, in a proper video, um, please chat to me in the comments about that below. Uh, as I said, if you would like to join the Gumption Club, um, it's so appreciated. I'll leave the link below where you can find out more about it and see if it's something that would suit you. Particularly, I want to hear in the comments if there's anybody who's over 30 who has more knowledge uh, on the things that they've learned because I am scared. I am. You could tell from the reading. I'm scared. Thank you for watching. Do like the video if you liked the video. Thumbs down the video if you hated the video because honesty is important. Uh, and I'll see you on my next one. Frog Snog out.